Okay, so we're going to test out this gimbal thing. Heck, without the dog, much to her dismay. So today, we are ripping out some of the mint. And we're going to put everything in that wheelbarrow over here in this front bed. Right, so there'll be some phlox, some yarrow, uh, lavender, some more Mexican even primrose, all up in here. I'm tear out quite a bit of this mint, which doesn't bother me at all. But I'm gonna fill in some of this lower garden space with some more perennials. I'm going to be doing an install of another brand new garden. So because of the way that I do this landscaping gig is I field grow everything at my house. Well, almost everything. If I have to buy it, then you have to pay for it. But otherwise, it's basically free. It's just my hourly rate. Um, so yeah, I've just been doing, you know, 25 bucks an hour and transferring good established plants, thereby avoiding the... Um, it didn't make it problem. This is by far my favorite grouping though this year. It's gonna be changing almost instantly because of the upcoming install. So right now, because it has grown up a little bit large, hiding behind this clary sage is a spirea. So I'm gonna be taking that one out and transferring it over to the new gardens. Hydrangea is just going nuts, but I love the spirea with the clary sage and the lamb's ears. Just that whole section with the big birch tree coming in behind it, filling in. And now the hydrangea is just about to pop along with that red canna. Um, I'm in love with that. This, this section of the garden is also basically nursery plants. So these are things that I have pulled out from other gardens so they don't kill anything. Pulled out from other gardens and then allow them to recuperate here. So I have lots of Stella de Oro lilies. This is a dianthus that was growing from seed over the winter. I think this Weigella up front is also going to get taken out and transferred. So this, this grouping is pretty thick at the moment. And as much as I like it, I kind of think that the, the, the Bridal Veil Spirea is uh, going to be plenty big enough to fill in that space and block the road. The, the plant on the left is actually an oregano. Oregano just gets really pretty, I think. That's why I like it as a garden, garden plant. I have my, my baby asparagus section. So we'll see what happens next year that should be starting to be harvestable. But yeah, the oregano is just gorgeous. So I'm going to be transferring that one and the Weigella, I think, over to the install. Coming around here, there's a, there's a speedwell that's recuperating quite nicely. And so, as I was saying, I was yanking out the mint because I have mint throughout and I'm pulling it from here and as I tear out the grass out there, I'm putting it in there because then I can just mow it and it's fine. It's good ground cover. Soil erosion issues are not an issue with that there. The clary sage is all just going nutty. So it's almost time to start deadheading because this is just a little bit spent. And if we deadhead it, we might be able to get another bloom out of it. These were, this was the land of bulbs. As you can see now it is the land of weeds. And some of the poppies made it, but not, not really. So I'm gonna fill this in with the, the geranium more Russian sage, more lavender, 
this is the back side of that grouping. So you can see where the tree is doing really well, but I don't want everything chunked together quite like that. The rabbits are a real issue over here. So because of that, I have to try and strategically plant things that they don't want to eat. They've been eating the dianthus out here because they really like how thick and, and secured this area is because it's so lush. They have plenty of places to hide. So we definitely have some predatory birds, but they do their thing and I chase them and that's that. So it looks to me like underneath this little rose is starting to come, come into its own. But as I look at the, uh, the trellis itself, I really need to get out here and wrap this wire. Because the trellis is meant to hold the sweet peas. Remember what I was saying about how it's going to get too hot for the sweet peas real quick? That was just a few days ago and they are dead as nails even with the nine inches of rain that we got over here that's just way too hot. So considering where things are planted, because this does not get watered at all. This is just rainwater. So it can be a little problematic trying to figure out what you can plant and not have to worry about. So that's what I'm working on, building out nursery stock for dry shade from the clients, you know. And that's the way that goes. We have a little volunteer tomato over here who's gonna get tied to the trellis. And <laughs> fun. But yeah, there were sunflowers here. The rabbits have since come along and completely decimated every sunflower I've got. So I have some more started from seed um, in the uh, in pots. But we'll see if they, anything comes of it this year. The double day lilies are coming together. We also have a real serious mole problem. So as he... Uh, comes along through my garden, he leaves little trails, of course. I think the rhododendrons just need feeding. Those are three years old and they are not particularly happy in this zone, but they're, they're trucking along. I always think they're dead and they, they come back, so he's, uh, eventually will be happy, I hope. Currently experiencing a pretty severe Japanese beetle problem. So these are, some of these are going to go in here and some of these are going to go in the sun. But the caladiums, I just like caladiums. I just think they're cool. And this is our staging area as we come through here. I picked up arborvitaes for some structure for the new garden. And then yesterday I pulled out the, uh, the two shrubs back there to go in her garden, so I gotta heal those in today, or they'll just dry out and die. What's the point? Uh, lots and lots and lots of dry shade plants back here. All those little cups are actually protecting foxgloves. Because the rabbits hate those too, which is kind of strange because they're completely deadly. But apparently not to rabbits, because they're still here. I got my my little bluebirds. Yeah, bluebird. Bluebird in there hunting. Hunting food. So this gimbal thing. Uh, I don't know if I like this thing or not. But. It's. Uh, new and interesting to me. So this. Section. My office is right on the other side of that window. You can see where the hollyhocks basically were, big and gorgeous, but they have been completely decimated as they always are. And the bugs just eat every last little piece. They leave, they leave just the uh, veins, really. So you can see what they've done to it. Not good, not good juju. In the back, the Japanese beetles are decimating them, so. Organic gardening is not as easy as you would think. But I don't like don't like putting chemicals on anything. So today we picked up 
some clearance perennials that will re rehab back here. And then next year they'll be big and lovely and all those little rosettes down there are actually foxgloves. So next year this will be a full big spike of English garden basically. And then these guys are getting in the ground today. More things rabbits don't like. But there's our gimbal test. Let's see if I can get videos to you that aren't quite so shaky. So I can't promise you won't get dizzy. <laughs> Sago palm that gets trucked in the house every year. There you go.